to the early meet and greet. Oh, you missed it. It was really yummy up there on the fourth floor. If you've been away, we know some of you have been traveling or working. We're so glad you're back with us today. And if you're visiting with us uh, this, you're, you're for the first time this Sunday, we're, we're so glad that you chose to be with us at Lighthouse. Relax, enjoy the presence of the Lord. We're glad that you're here. Welcome. Welcome. I just want to mention uh, just two things very quickly. Uh, you know, we've been praying for Pastora Vivian's daughter, Malen, in the Philippines, who has been waiting for her... Uh, for the surgery for the uh, lump that is in her breast, uh, they were they've done a. The, she's now in Manila, and they have done uh, a biopsy. They're waiting for all the final results, but the doctors were quite certain that it was not cancerous. Um, they but they will 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 get the final results this Friday. However, because uh, the they feel the lump has been there a long time. They, when they did the biopsy, they, they said that like, there's some pus and so there's some infection and things like that. So they do, um, they have said, please pray, but do also pray that the Lord's hand um, will be upon them and that faith will continue to grow and they'll be strong in the Lord. Uh, Pastor Vivian is in northern Philippines this morning because their uh, uh, brother Andre the, and his pastor are there with them with the Atas Church today and then she'll go back to Manila. So, but do continue to pray for Malen and then f and for the results um, that this will. They think probably that because of the what they saw, maybe that the lump has been there for a year or more. Um, so, but just pray for God's hand upon her for for healing and and for strengthening. And also, we prayed for Susan last uh, last Sunday, and so she will go into she goes into the hospital tomorrow, and surgery will be on Wednesday afternoon at four o'clock. She'll be at St. Paul's Hospital on the island. Susan, you want to stay all by yourself alone in the hospital room, or can people come to visit you? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> okay. Okay, so if you have questions, just check with her. Uh, it's in Central, right? Is Causeway Bay, sorry. Okay, it's in, in Causeway Bay. Um, so, and if you have questions about how to get there, I think Ida and others know how to get there very well. You can check. She's uh, specifically asked for prayer. Wednesday afternoon, the surgery is four. At present time, the doctor's report is it is cancer. Um, so we continue to pray for God's strength, God's peace, God's hand upon her. The Bible is very clear that before one of our days came to be, the Lord knew them all. He is our Lord. He is our God. He's bigger than doctor's reports. He's bigger than circumstances. He's bigger than all of these things. So we look to him in this situation and we continue to pray. So just as the Lord um, brings Susan to mind, do pray and s send words of encouragement. She doesn't have a smartphone, so all your messages she won't get. But if you call her, she will, and, and, and speak words of encouragement, she will get that. So please keep... Um, Keep our dear sisters in your prayers and lifted to the to the throne of the Father. Amen. Stephen, would you turn that to low fan, please? I think if it's not on low fan, let's put that in low fan. Amen. We want to turn this morning to the word of the Lord that he has for us, and we're going to continue with what we started last week. This will be, um, this will be probably a series, well, it is a series already. It will be for, for several weeks, and we're going to continue this morning with how we grow. So how we grow, and I've, I've chosen various appropriate backgrounds for us as we talk about how we grow as Christians. We, we know how we grow physically. You know, physically we come to a, a certain age. You know, we, when you look at young people, when you look at kids as they begin to grow, sometimes it seems like they sort of stay the same for a long time and then then you look at it and you think, oh my! And they look like they've grown three inches in, in three months, you know, and they begin to grow. And, um, and we, see this, we see this in the physical world. So we're looking at how we grow, how we grow in God. And this is important to God. Brothers and sisters, please don't think that God's only purpose, only purpose in saving you is taking you to heaven. Now, heaven's going to be wonderful. God has all sorts of things planned for us that we're going to find out about. We know some of them now. But God's plans for you and me, God's goals for us, 
It's more than heaven. God has things he wants to do in us and through us here on this earth now. And so we look forward to that day and it helps us to, to walk in him while we're here. But God has things he wants to do in us and through us in the time that he has given us while we're on earth. And so this is, and it's important. And what happens here affects what will be there. And so it's important. When we look at the New Testament, the New Testament says a lot about heaven and about the coming of the Lord and how we are to live. But do you know what? The New Testament says even more about earth and how we live here. And so we want to take time these few weeks to talk about how we grow as Christians. And we talked about this last time. This is found throughout the New Testament letters. It's found in the prayers of Paul, of Peter, of others. It's found in all the things that they write. And so as we look ahead, if we're wondering, what is God's will for me? We always want to know, don't we? What is, well, uh, Pastor Renee and I, oh, Pastor, please pray for me. I want to know what God's will is for my life. And God's will for our life is growth ahead. <laughs> growth ahead. May that be the signpost of our lives in 2015. Amen? Amen. May that be the signpost of our lives. And so we begin, as we said last week, we begin not with self-effort, because self-effort fails, right? Have you ever tried to really grow and be good? And so have I. How did that work for you? Not so well. You tried, you did okay for a while, and then you failed, or you got tired of trying, and you gave up, and you fell, and then you had guilt, right? So I don't think that's God's plan for us, and I don't think that's God's pattern for us. So we're going to look at what the Word of God says about how we grow. What does God do? What is our part? And then we're going to grow in the Lord. So we're going to begin with God. We talked about this last time, Colossians 1.6. This is a reminder. We begin with God, set aside self-effort, set aside guilt. If God's been speaking to you about this, then you confess to him and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I have been slow in this area. I have failed in this area. But Lord, I confess it to you. Now, God, work in me and show me what you want to do. And then keep on going and stop living with the burden of guilt all the time. I should try harder. I should do more. God does not want us to live with that. The enemy is happy to keep us under that, but that's not God's plan for us. So we look ahead and we see in Colossians 6 the power of the good news. It's God. And it's not just the Bible. It is, it is that. Please don't misunderstand me. It is the Word of God, but it is the Word of God in the power of the Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit breathes life into the Word of God. And the Word of God is made alive in our hearts. And we look at this, what does it say? Paul writes to the Colossians, he's never met them before. They have been reached with the gospel by one of Paul's disciples, by one of Paul's uh, converts, Epaphras or Epaphras, however you want to pronounce it, as I've said. And he, Paul, reached Epaphras, Epaphras then went, preached in Colossae, and these people responded to the Word of God. Sometimes we think it has to be the big pastor. It has to be the famous one. It has to be the one that everybody knows. Brothers and sisters, it does not have to be. The power of God, the power to transform lives is in the Word of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that means whether it's me or whether it's you where you work or with your families, it is God's power through God's Word and the power of the Holy Spirit that will change lives. Now sometimes we'll say, Pastor, would you come speak? Would you come share? And we can and we do that. But do you know what? God's plan is for you to grow up in Him so that where you are, with your family, with your friends, in your work situation, the power of God 
and the light of God and the word of God comes through you and people are touched and people are reached. That's God's plan and we're happy to be part of it. As pastors, we will encourage you, help you to grow, we'll do our part, but God wants you to be involved in that as well. And so we see this picture here. It was not through, it was indirectly through Paul. So he says it's bearing fruit, what? It's the good news. It's bearing fruit everywhere by changing lives. It has to begin with God. Not because there's a church there, but because God was there through his people. And he says, it's changing lives just as it changed your lives from the day you first heard and understood the truth about God's wonderful grace. Look at the two parts. You heard and you understood. I'm so thankful at Lighthouse that we are part of this process, aren't we? When we read about China, when we look at what we're doing in China, here in Hong Kong, in the Philippines, we get to be part of the prayer process. We get to be part of the giving process. We get to be part of the going process. And it takes all parts. It takes all parts. If people are going to hear, somebody has to go and tell them. If somebody is going to go and tell them, then they have to be supported. That's all part of the process. But it's not just hearing. What's the other part? Heard and understood heard and understood because we all know people that have heard 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 and there's never been a change right their lives are just the same they may be very religious very religious but religion doesn't mean anything to God no, it means nothing to God because religion has no power to change a life no power whatsoever religion didn't die for you religion didn't wash away your sins Religion didn't free you from darkness and bring you into God's kingdom. Who did? Oh, Jesus did. Jesus did. He's the one who makes the difference. And it says, when you heard and understood. So here's this, oh, God give us ears and hearts to understand. That means the word goes out. And it's not just the word of God. It's the word of God with the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes? It has to be that quickening power of the Holy Spirit it goes out and we hear it we receive it and we respond and when we respond our lives are changed our lives are changed and the more we respond the more our lives are changed and the more open our hearts the more our lives are changed that is God's pattern. Pastor Renee, Renee and I were talking this week and we were looking at, he, we were saying, oh, now where is this scripture or something? And we were looking at some, some passages in the New Testament and we were just sitting upstairs in the office and we both, we were remarking on that. Imagine the church of the Thessalonians, so at Thessalonica. Do you, <coughs> excuse me, do you know how long? So it's a great church. If you go back and read the letters, wow, they had such a great reputation that their reputation was spreading throughout the Christian world. Everybody had heard about the Thessalonian Christians. Do you know how long the gospel was preached to them when Paul and his band and his group went? Do you know how long? If you read the book of Acts and then you look at the letters of Thessalonians, do you know what you will see? How long did Paul have with this great church that just grew Two weeks. That's it. Two weeks. And yet they were alive enough and vibrant enough and fruitful enough that out of those two weeks came this wonderful church with a great testimony that Paul writes to them. And he says, oh, I've, I keep praying for you. We were so glad when we were there. And you know what he says? Because you received the word of God you received our word as it is, which is it's the word of God that has the power to change your lives. And it did. So their hearts respond and then they begin to grow. And that's what we see here in Colossians as well. So when you get discouraged and when you say, oh, it's so long, it's so hard, it is those things. But then look back to the time before your life was changed. Remember what a mess your life was? Remember it? How selfish 
how messed up, how rotten, how self-righteous, how this and that before, bound by alcohol or drugs or pornography or other things or other things like that. And then you heard and understood and it started bearing fruit in your life, in your life. So that's what we see. And we start with God. Now, uh, in the first service last week, I got much further than I did in the second service. So we'll get into what we got into last week. And I want to talk about some principles of, of growth as we begin to grow in the Lord. So it starts with the Lord. He begins to pr tr produce fruit. And I want us to look at an example in the natural that helps us to understand the spiritual. God, Jesus, when he told parables, most of the time he was using examples from nature to help people understand spiritual truths. So I want us to look at some things in nature about growth that will help us understand some spiritual principles. And, and I want to talk about my fav one of my favorite flowers. In fact, this, I love this flower because it, it's beautiful and it's colorful, but uh, next slide. But I love it because it's so, so easy to grow, okay? Let's see if you know what it is. If you were in the first service, don't say anything, okay? Take a look at this flower. Any gardeners here? Look carefully, look closely. What is it? Uh, no, not a daisy. Actually, daisies are kind of hard to grow. This one, this one, you just look at it and say, grow, and it grows. <laughs> it, it, in fact, you can even say, don't grow, and it will still grow. It's a zinnia, okay? Z-I-N-N-I-A. And if you want to be a gardener and you're not sure, you don't have confidence, start with zinnias. They'll give you so much confidence. They will grow all on their own. And when Sister Betty and I lived in... Um, at Nam Wapo and the other place before, our garden was full of zinnias because they're so easy to grow. And so it started out here, and zinnias are many colors, many different types as well. They grow very well in the Philippines as well. They like, they like it hot, and they like a lot of sun. So that's why it's so great in the Philippines. <laughs> and so we had these in our garden, and they, uh, they the, you know, seeds come from, the, right, they come from right here. And then we would see pretty soon, maybe the leaf, maybe the flower, when the flower, if we didn't cut them off, when the flower started to dry, and then we would begin to see the seeds. And one of the great things we would find out about zinnias is, I wouldn't even have to, maybe I would, I would plant a few at the beginning of the season, but after I planted them, do you know that I almost didn't have to do anything to them because they would produce seeds, and within a week or two, do you know what I would see if I walked out to the garden? I'd go out to the garden and what would I see? The next one? I see this little plant. Now I'm smart enough to know, you know what that plant is? I already recognize it I, because I know what it looks like. It's a zinnia plant. It's a zinnia plant. And if I give it, if I would give it two or three weeks, in two or three weeks, really, literally in about three weeks, it would start flowering again. And surprise, surprise, do you know what the flowers look like when they started flowering? They didn't look like orchids. They didn't look like uh, not roses. That's a, a azalea. That's right, azalea or status. That's what this one is. Do you know what they? You know what the flowers look like? You'll never believe it. What did they look like? <gasps> Pastor Rena, you're so smart. <laughs> they look like zinnias. They look like zinnias. So. You know, you know how he knew that really tough answer? It's because he was in the first service in here. <laughs> but here we have a principle. Here we have a principle. You're all laughing because you already know. And you, you, of course it looks like a zinnia. But here is a natural principle that carries over into the spiritual. And we have the principle of life. And what is the principle? One of the principles of life and growth. And what is the principle? Healthy life reproduces itself. Healthy life reproduces itself. That's true in the natural. It's true in the spiritual. So let's make the spiritual application because here is a spiritual principle of growth. When God's life in you is healthy, when it has what it needs to grow, and, and God's life, God's life it's always healthy. God, 
The life of God is always healthy. It's what we allow in it. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But God's life in you will work to produce what? God's life. God's life. What is God like? Is he impatient? What is he? Patient. Is he gentle? He's gentle. And he will work in you and he will work in me to reproduce his life in us. That's what he puts in us. That's the nature of God's life in us. And that is the power of God as it works in us. I, you and I sometimes, I, I see Christians, and I have been that way in earl, as an earlier, younger Christian much of my life. I would try so hard to be like God. Have you ever tried hard to be like God? I try to be loving. I try to be patient. I try to be gentle. And maybe everything looked okay on the outside. But oh, if you could have seen my heart. Inside my heart, it was jumping up and down and going, ah, like that. And man looks on the out, outer, but where does God look? Mm, God looks on the heart. That's where the God, God life starts. And when we see this, the principle of life, of healthy life, is that it will reproduce itself. And so God in you is going to make you like himself. That's the nature. And that's why God says, I'm your father, you're my child. Those of you that have, uh, that have born physical children, you've born physical children, honestly, I look at your, at your physical children, I look at them running around the church sometimes, or I see pictures, it's so very clear who their parents are, isn't it? I just look at the kids and I see, oh, I see part of, I see part of uh, Keith there, and I see part of B there, and then some that's just a mix, and it's all Toby himself, and whatever, but we see the, we see the reproduction of life, and that's what healthy life is. is. So there we see a principle. Uh, we see a principle of life, okay? Now let's go a little bit forward, and let's talk about that principle in, uh, in people. So, for example, here we go. Okay, let's look at the next slide. Okay, so here we have a young man. Whoops, sorry. This young man. So we look at it in the physical, and so here's this young man. And what is the process for this young man? Now, you may not know this young man, but I know this young man. And this young man is actually... <laughs> Did you know that? Do you see it now? I heard some of you saying, Pastor Renee, Pastor Renee. And some of you cheated because you were here last week. <laughs> Or you are the first service, and you're supposed to keep your mouth shut and let people figure it out for themselves. But I want to talk, look at it, because we're going to look at some other pictures as well. We're going to see Sister Bridget, too, um, in just a minute. But I want to, as you look at this, I want to talk about some other principles, some other principles of life and principles of growth, okay? We're going to make the spiritual application. We're going to look at, the, at some of the physical things. So here we see this young man. At this age, he was about 14, right? Roughly, roughly. At this age, <laughs> okay? But from there to there was a process. So one of the principles we'll look at in just a minute. Let's look at the next picture. Mm. How old were you there, Pastor Renee? Okay, were you a Christian yet? No. Can you tell that Pastor Renee's not a Christian at that point? I can. I had the other pictures last week, and then he sent me this one and another picture this week, and I looked at it, and I, it really spoke to me because, you know, I, you know, we don't, we don't, because holiness and change is internal first. But God, when you begin to follow God and he changes your life, do you know what will happen? There will be an external and an outer change. There will be. There will be. I looked at that. I didn't have to think about it. I already knew. I didn't have to ask him, although I did ask him in front of everybody this morning. And he said, no, I wasn't a Christian yet. Let's look at the next one. Mm. 
is there any question that he's not yet born again? <laughs> and, and by the way, not just because his hair is long. I know Christians with long hair, so I'm not talking about that. But have you seen that when God works on the inside, he makes a change on the outside, right? He makes a change on the outside. So there's this process. Not yet a Christian. Now, physically, don't talk about spiritual, but physically, there is potential in this young man, if he reaches his full potential physically, there, is, there was all the potential for this physically in this. All the potential. And that's one of our principles. Okay, let's see what comes next. That's date. That was their son, David. Okay. Okay. What comes next? Oh. Then we come to this one. Uh, do you think by this time this man is a Christian? That's right. He is by then. His hair's still a little bit long. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. God doesn't look, God doesn't say, oh, their hair's long, they can't be Christians yet. Okay. Do you know what I have, do you know what I, I have found as, as people walk with the Lord? As people walk with the Lord, the things that need to be changed, God will change. If the life grows in the person, the things that need to be changed, God will change them. God will deal with them without, most of the time, without us having to say, you know you're a Christian, you shouldn't dress like that. You know you're a Christian, you shouldn't wear that or this or that or whatever. Most of the time, when people are growing in the Lord, most of the time, Holy Spirit takes care of that because he's the Holy One. He's the Holy One. Okay? So we see that one next. And then what comes next? Let's look at another one. Ah, by this one, this is before Esther came along, but Esther was coming along very, very shortly after that. Maybe in two weeks, Esther was going to be on the way in this one. By this time, obviously, they're born again. They're serving the Lord, but that's not all. There's more of the process. What do we see? Okay, next one. Ah, here we are. Here we are. The, you just come to Hong Kong, right? Or just before, okay? Just before, just before coming to Hong Kong. He looks like a flaming evangelist, a fire evangelist, doesn't he? Okay. Now, from here to here is how long? 50 years, okay? 50 years of growth. So let's talk about some of the principles. And let's just leave this up and just look at this for a little bit. Here's some other principles for us to think about as we think about growth, okay? Growth, number one, we see the physical, but more than the physical. In growth, in spiritual growth, in you, because of God's life in you, is all the potential for who and what you can be and what you can do. All the potential is there. God says it in his word. It's all there. We look at limitations. We look at what we cannot do. We look at what we think we cannot be because of my past. God does not consider limitations. God looks at us, puts his spirit in us, puts his life in us. It's his spirit, but I want to say life because we're talking about growth. Puts his life in us, and in that life is all the potential for who you can be and for who I can be and what I can do in God, in God. And that is one of the principles of growth. The potential is there because God lives in you. Is all of the potential realized yet? No. Do we sometimes see some of it? Yes. Just as we do physically. I see some physical things there that I look here now and I see some physical things. Oh, what was there in the potential or a little bit, I see it now. I, I, still, I see parts of it now, fully, more fully developed. And that's true spiritually as well. That's true spiritually as well. So there's the principle of potential in growth, but there's another principle at work, and that is in growth. There is the principle of process, okay? The principle of process. So the potential is one of the principles. Process is one of the other principles. It will take time for you and for me to grow into the person 
God has planned for me to be and the person that God has planned for you to be. And you will, if you will work with God, you will keep growing until the time you go to heaven to be with him. You will never reach it. You will never arrive. You will never say, ah, done. We see that when we look at the New Testament. Paul, the great apostle Paul, do you remember what he said? He said, I haven't reached it yet. I haven't arrived yet. But, remember what he said? I press towards the goal for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Here's Paul, the great apostle, and he looks at himself and he knows because the life of God is in him. There is more for him. There is growth for him. There is greater for him. And it is true for you and for me as well. There's more for you. There's greater for you. You can go further in God than you have gone. There's only one limit to growth, one and one only, and that limit is time. That's it, time. Paul said at the end of his life, when he already knew that very shortly, I am going to be martyred for my Christian stand, for my following the Lord Jesus Christ. Only then did Paul say what? Paul said, I have run the race. I have finished the course. Now there is in store for me a crown, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me. And then he says, oh, this is exciting, not only to me, but to all who long for his appearing, to all who are looking for him. And not until then did Paul say, I've reached the end. I know that now I'm going to heaven. And brothers and sisters, that's why, that's why I said at the very beginning, God has more for you than heaven, though heaven is wonderful though heaven is where we will be with him forever. God has something for you here and now in the limits of time on this earth. And if you and I don't get it now, we're not going to get it in heaven. We're not going to get it in heaven. There are things for you and for me on earth now, choices that we make, potential that can grow and blossom into fulfillment that are only possible here and now. And yet, oh beloved, we waste time, we waste opportunities, we remain stubborn, we resist and we say no and we say I'm good enough and I'm okay and we lose and we're missing out and we're wasting we're wasting the precious things that God has for us. And that's why God has put this on my heart so strongly, that we move on, that we move on in Him. But it is a process. It is a process. Just as we say, just as we see here, by this time, Pastor Rene was already a Christian, but he was not yet then what he is now. He'd not yet gone through all the things he's gone through, before now, he hadn't made some of the choices yet that he, has, that he made as he comes to here, but the possibility was there, and he went through a process. And so when we come to growth, there is a process. There is a process. That's one of the principles of growth. And if we miss it and we get impatient, we're going to miss out. We're going to miss out. You know, I, I think so often, have you ever prayed uh, for an answer, maybe for a loved one, or for this or that. We've prayed at times, right? Have you also ever prayed for something, a spiritual something in your life? God, do this in my life. God, would you, whatever. And we pray, fill in the blank. We pray. And we pray it just a little bit, and it doesn't happen, right? How many of you, yes or no, has that, is that just my experience, or is that your experience too? And it doesn't happen. And what happens when we've prayed it a few times and it just seems like nothing has happened. We give up, right? We give up and we go on to other things. I am convinced, understand the picture, that heaven is full of gifts, spiritual gifts, that God's children, you and I, that we have asked Him for, and God has said, I will, you persevere, you be patient, you don't give up. You walk in faith. You keep asking. 
seeking, knocking. You keep on and I will answer. I will do it. I will change you. And yet we pray once or twice and ah, I don't feel anything. My heart's still the same. Have you ever, you know, my heart hasn't, hasn't changed at all. And then we just keep on going and we miss out on what God has for us. I want to encourage you this morning, don't give up. I was very honest with you last week, the beginning of this year, one of my prayers was, God, make me what? A person of prayer. I want to be honest with you. I didn't feel a thing, a thing. No wiggle of my heart. No stirring. No, oh, not even a, a burst of faith that God would do this. But I felt that God had given me this prayer to pray. And so I have continued to pray that. Honestly, almost every time I pray, even when I'm praying for you or for my family or for the Philippines, I'll put in, Lord, make me a person of prayer. And then I'll keep on praying with it for other things. And then I'll come to the end, Lord, make me a person of prayer. And now you know what I've started doing? Lord, I thank you that you're making me a person of prayer. And what I will tell you is now, I'm beginning to feel some changes. I'm beginning to feel some changes. And as I said before, do I pray? Yes, I pray. That's not it. But there's greater potential there. There's greater potential there. And I want to fulfill that potential. And so it's a process. So don't give up. If you have felt like giving up, don't give up. Don't give up. Receive the gifts of God that he has for you. When he puts something, honestly, brothers and sisters, when he puts something in your heart that is good to pray, I, I don't know any other spiritual way to say it, good things to pray. Well, you know what? What are some good things to pray? God, increase my love. Oh, that's a great thing to pray. Lord, help me to be more patient. Oh, that's a great thing to pray. <laughs> Lord, I want to whatever for you. That's a great thing to pray. Those are good prayers to pray. God answers those prayers. God answers those prayers, but you got to keep on. That's part of the process. That's part of the process of growth. And it starts with God, and then we respond. And this is how God works in us. So we see in the next one, Galatians 5, 22 and 23. And we, I, don't even, I don't remember if we got this far or not last time. I want you to see this, and I want this to encourage you this morning. Okay? What is this? The, but the fruit of the Spirit. We know this one so well, right? How many of you have this one memorized? Yes? Yeah, I do. But I have it King James memorized. You know, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, faith, temperance. Against such there is no law. Okay? And then I look at this and I think, huh? And I have to find it there, but this is a more modern translation. But again, look at what it says. Who grows this fruit? Come on, who grows it? Do you try really hard, Julie? Are you trying really, really hard to be more loving and patient with that man seated next to you? He just hit her. <laughs> we try, don't we? We try. But some of these things only God can do, right? Why can only God do it? Because it's God life. It's not people life. It's God life. It's God life. And that's why this says what? Read these words with me. But the Holy Spirit produces. The Holy Spirit produces. He does this, brothers and sisters. I can't do it. I can't do it. He has to do it. The Holy Spirit produces. Now, remember what we read in Colossians 1, 6? Let's look at that one again. Next slide. The good news comes out. It's bearing fruit everywhere by changing lives just as it changed your life. Who started the change? God started the change. How did he do it? His life started changing you, right? Do you remember when you became a Christian? Some of us don't, you know, we've been Christians a long time, but some of you that remember very well when you became a Christian. Do you remember some of the things that you wanted to do and liked to do before you were a Christian? Steve, I'm sorry, I like to pick on Steve. He doesn't mind. Big Steve. Steve, don't mind if I ask. Did you love to go out and party and get really drunk before you were a Christian? You, did you love it? Did you long for it? 
all through the week until the weekend came so then you could get drunk and whatever, right? That's what he longed for. Steve, I want to ask you, how about your weeks now? Do you, do you just, is that what you think about all the time now? It's not. Did somebody say to Steve, Steve, now God used people to speak to his life, but the inner change, did you hear a sermon that said, it's bad to get drunk and you're a Christian, you shouldn't get drunk, now stop that. No. What was the most, po what was the most powerful voice that spoke to your heart? Okay, friends spoke, but friends say all sorts of things. I'll bet you had friends before that had said, Steve, don't you think you drink too much? Maybe you should control a bit more. No change. What brought the change? Holy Spirit. He started putting his life, he started changing your heart. Now I'm just using that as an example because Steve, I think, doesn't mind and, and, he, and he's been so open about what, how God changed him. But the principle, brothers and sisters, is true in all of our lives, right? It's true in all of our lives. And then we see the other part that goes with it. Look at this. Here we have in Philippians 1, 6. So this good life begins in us. And I want to tell you something. You have a great master gardener. A great master gardener who's working in your life. And what does it say? Here, you can put here two good verses for you to memorize. Colossians 1, 6. Philippians 1, 6. Yes? Put them together. Memorize this. And Paul says, I'm certain that God who began the good work within you, he will continue his work until it's finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. So God is working in your life. He's working in your heart to continue the work that began. Remember when you became a Christian? Were you a Christian? Were you born again? Was God's life in you? Yes, yes, and yes. But were there still things in your life that needed work? Yes. Are there still changes that are needed now? Yes. And God, the master gardener who has planted his life in you and in me, keeps on working, keeps on working. That is the nature of God life. That's the nature of God. But we come to this, and now we've got a problem. Because we all know people, or maybe ourselves, that say, yes, this is true, yes, this is true, I believe it because it's in the Bible, but they're just not changing. They're the same. They're the same. They're still struggling with the same shortcomings. They're still struggling with the same sins. And maybe instead of they, we should change the pronoun and we should say what? I. And I'm still going around the same thing over and over and over and over again. Is there a contradiction? Is the Word of God not true? Does the Word of God and the power of God work for some people, but not for some of us because our sins are too stubborn? Do you ever feel that sometimes? The sins, it's just, it's too stubborn. It's, it's too hard to change. Maybe other people, well, you know, Pastor Jennifer, because she had Christian parents, so it's easier for her, so she can, but you know, my background was so ungodly. That's not what the Word of God says. The Word of God says it's the life of God in us. So why do some of us not grow or grow very slowly? And this is what we come to in the, in the last few minutes as we come to this, this morning. Because Christians are not like zinnias. There are some principles that are the same, but there are some other principles at work when we come to spiritual growth. And I want us to look at those. So I want us to look, next slide, at some principles of spiritual growth, okay? That help to answer the questions, why do we not grow? And then how can we grow? And so the first one, when we look at principles of spiritual growth, number one, God has given us a will and freedom to choose. All oh, brothers and sisters, that the God of the universe the one who owns everything, the one who cannot be contained by time, but is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Such a God would make you and would make me and then say to us, here, I give you a will. 
and I give you freedom. And you can choose me or not. You can grow or not. I want you to choose me. I want you to grow, but it's your choice. I will give you in Christ Jesus all that you need to fully reach the potential that I have for you. I will give you, remember what it says in 2 Peter chapter 1, he has given us everything we need for life and godliness. Everything, everything. God says, I will do my part. I am doing my part. And now, here's the principle of growth. I give you a will. I give you freedom to choose. And this is why some Christians don't grow. Because we take that precious thing that God has given us and we say, I'm going to choose this instead. I want something else. I'm satisfied with something else. Brothers and sisters, as I say this morning, I'm not saying this in a condemning way. I'm not saying this in a judgmental way. But I'm talking about this because God wants us to grow in Him. God has plans for us that are so much better than what we could plan for ourselves. And here's the principle of growth. He gives us a will and freedom to choose. We choose. We choose. And then there's another principle at work as well that is related to this. And the next one is, he chooses to involve us. It's part of it. He chooses to involve us with his purposes. With his purposes. Oh, how great God is. How faithful God is. How trusting, even knowing that some people will say, that's not what I want, that's not how I want to do it. Still, God says, I let you be part of what I want to do in you and through you from the very beginning all the way through. Do you know who's going to be in heaven one day? That's why growth and choice as we talk about it here on earth, will not be a part of heaven in the same way. Don't misunderstand me. We'll talk more about that later, not this Sunday. But who will be in heaven? Heaven will be full of people who on earth have said, God, I choose you. God, I choose your ways. God, I cooperate with you and I choose your life. That's why if you've been wasting time and messing around with this and that and whatever, it's time to stop wasting time. Your time, your gift of time is limited. You don't know how long you have. You don't know when your time is up. And I'm not trying to scare you. That's the reality. But God has given you time now. And God has given us choice now. One day in heaven, we've already chosen him. And one day in hell, everybody, I will tell you right now, everybody who goes to hell, they will not be in hell because they have floated there. They will be there because they have chosen a different path and another way. And we will be in heaven not because we floated there. But be, not because, oh, well, I think I'll try to be good. We will be there because God has poured his grace on our lives and on our hearts. And we have said with our choice and with our will now, God, I choose you. Brothers and sisters, for some of you here this morning, you've played around long enough. It's time to stop playing around. And it's time to choose. It's time to choose your eternity depends on it depends on it and God's grace I'm not preaching a, a sermon of judgment I'm not I'm preaching a sermon a message of grace of grace the gift of time is the is a gift of grace the gift of free will of choice it's a gift of grace from a loving God and it's time it's time and if you will choose if you will choose to grow to follow God to allow him to work in you all of the resources of heaven all of the resources of Jesus Christ and his life will be available to you for God to work in you and through you and make of you everything he has planned to be everything he has all the potential that is there because of the Christ life the God life that is in you now 
choose, choose, choose. I remember the words of Joshua. He stood before a nation that God had poured out, on whom God had poured out his grace. Remember what Joshua said? We know it, don't we? Choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Brothers and sisters, it's time to choose. If you haven't chosen God before, it's time to choose. If your growth has been this way and that way and just whatever, it's time to choose. All the grace of God is available. But it's time that we stop wasting the grace of God. It's time that we stop wasting the will and the choice He's given us and the time that He's given us. God wants us. God has plans for us. He wants us to grow in Him for our sake. For our sake. You see, if it were for God's sake, if it were for God's sake, he, he, He'd say, forget it. I don't have to give you free choice. I'll just make you. Tension, I will make you with a heart and a will that automatically default. It will choose me. But for our sake, He says, I let you choose. Oh, dear brothers and sisters, may this be a year, 2015, that we choose. God, I'm going to grow. I can't make myself grow, but God, I can choose you. And you will make me grow. You will make me grow. When we come back to this next time, we're going to look at how what are the ways we grow with this choice that God gives us, with this time that God gives us, then how do we start growing? How do we cooperate with God? How do we work with God to start growing? It's all there. It's all there. And it is so worth it. Amen? Let's pray. And as I pray, would you pray too? I'll pray for you. You pray for yourself. You pray for yourself. God, God, we thank you for the God life you have put in us. We thank you that because you are our Father, we are your children. And that your purpose and your plan and your power, they're at work in our lives to make us like you. Make us like you. We thank you for the gift of free, of free will. We thank you for the gift of choice. We thank you for the gift of time. God, I pray this morning for your people, that your people and that I, that the leaders, that from the top to the bottom, from the bottom to the top, every one of us, the children, the young people, the Sunday school teachers, the worship leaders, the ushers, the tech people, the musicians, the servers, the meeting, great Lord, every one of us, every one of us, oh God, oh God, oh God, may we choose you again. Lord, we want to choose to cooperate with you. Lord, give us again, enlarge our vision, enlarge our understanding of what you have for us, your plan for us. Oh, Lord, it's been so small for so many of us. We've just thought, Lord, solve my problems, make me happy. And, and, and God, make everything work out okay. And oh God, you have so much more for us. You have so much more for us. Lord, may the eyes of our heart be enlarged to understand your great love for us, your plan for us, and the exceeding great and precious promises that are available to us in Jesus Christ as we choose you, as we ask and keep on asking, as we seek and keep on seeking as we knock and keep on knocking God I pray for those who have asked for things of you good things of you and they've grown weary and they've given up Lord I pray you would stir their hearts and may they again come back to you and keep on coming back to you until they begin to see the answer arise in their lives and in their situations. Oh, Lord, Lord, we pray again for loved ones this morning who are far from you, whose hearts are cold. We lift them to you. And, Lord, just call them by name right now. One of your loved ones, some of your loved ones, your family members or your friends. Call them by name right now before the Lord. Call them by name and say, Lord, I pray, I pray for this one. I pray for this one. Lord, we come back to you again. It is your will that not any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I call the name. Lord, I call the name of my brother. Lord, I call the name of some of my relatives. Oh, God, bring them back to you. Bring them back to you. Lord, I come again.
Lord, for myself, Lord, for our lives, we come back to you again with prayers that we have prayed in the past for change, for growth, for love, for patience, for, for dealing with areas of sin in our lives that have such a stubborn stronghold. And we just come back to you again, not in self-effort, but we just say, God, oh God, we come to you again. We come to you again. Work your answer. Lord, we keep on coming to you. God, I ask for your faith to spring in hearts. And Lord, I ask for a strength of will. And Lord, you have promised you would give us, a str you would strengthen our wills to choose you. That's your promise, Lord. Strengthen our wills to choose you. And Lord, strengthen our power to carry out what you're calling us to do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. God bless you.